Hi, it's Joni. Welcome. I'm here today to tell you my thoughts on Bag of Bones by Stephen King, which I finished reading not quite a week ago, so my thoughts are pretty fresh. Um, I haven't had any major changes of heart in that amount of time. Sometimes I do uh, after a bit, but I've like nothing yet, so I don't think I really will. Um, this book came out in 1998. In case you were curious in terms of how dated it might be, um, not very, but it's not something where, you know, cell phones are very prevalent, for instance. Not that I think that would make a big difference in this book, but sometimes it does. Um, anyway, this is about Mike Noonan, an approaching Middle Ages writer who at the very, very beginning of the book, his wife Jo passes away unexpectedly. And immediately after her death, he discovers that she was keeping something from him that she would have, he would have thought she would have told him right away. Um, which is the first of many, 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 many different mysteries in this book. He lives in Derry, Maine most of the time, but the majority of this book takes place a couple years after she dies, um, three or four years, I think, um, in when he decides to go to a little cabin on a lake that he and his wife owned in a township elsewhere in Maine, which um, turns out, he never knew this before after all the years they've owned this, but um, turns out might be haunted, who knows, could be, and almost as soon as he arrives in the little township, he befriends this 21-year-old widowed mother of a three-year-old daughter who is engaged in a vicious custody battle over her daughter with her daughter's uh, paternal grandfather. If all that sounds a little convoluted, like I'm giving you too many details or telling you too much of the plot, um, I'm not. There is so, so, so much that goes on in this book. It has so many layers and so many characters and um, just all sorts of stuff going on. It's not one of his super massive sprawling works like Under the Dome or The Stand, something like that, but it is like a 600 page book and it has quite a bit going on. Unlike some of his other works, a lot of that content, a lot of the page count, I think comes from more content, more storyline rather than more characters. There are plenty of side characters. You do get lots of stories, backstories, or little tidbits of people's lives, which is one of the things I love about Stephen King's work but you don't have a ton of main characters like in, for instance, It or The Stand. So I'll leave the synopsis there for now, I guess, and tell you what this book is like, or I guess what kind of book it is. Because of all of the mysteries that play such a huge role in this, I almost uh, would rather call it a mystery book than a horror book, but it does have some pretty uh, graphic, pretty vicious content in a few different places, which makes me think definitely needs to be in horror, besides the fact that it is overall a ghost story. It also deals with some pretty um, intense subject matter. Obviously, grief is a big part of it. Um, not only the main character has lost his wife, but uh, one of the other main side characters has lost her husband not too long ago. And because of some of the scenes specifically and some of the content, I kind of want to give just a bunch of di different trigger warnings. But um, I guess if that's something that if, if there's content that you're concerned about, uh, you might just Google it um, there because I don't want to give things away. There are things that you don't see until the very end of the book that I don't want to give you a trigger warning for so that you know to expect if that makes any sense. Um, if you didn't guess by the fact that he, the main character is from Derry, Maine and most of it takes place in Maine, there are actually quite a few little tidbits and ties to other King work in this, which I quite enjoyed. Sorry, my hand was going numb. We had to put the book on the shelf. Um, Nothing overt. There aren't any like main characters from other other works in this one, but uh, besides the location, it's one of the few books that takes place at least in part in Derry. Um, the number 19 makes quite a few reappearances if you're a Dark Tower fan. That should mean something to you. Um, just lots of little little things that I generally enjoy if I'm reading works by an author who has a big a big body of work. So as far as what I liked best about this book, because overall I really liked this book, was the atmosphere. It just, like, it was super, super atmospheric for me. Obviously, being on a lake, there was uh, quite a bit to do with water. Drowning was used sort of as a plot device, I guess. I don't know. Um, in a lot of different instances, there's also some sort of claustrophobic feelings. A little bit of the, like, basement fright. Like, a, a fear of basements is something I'm, I'm have a little bit of, I guess, that, that is something that usually gets to me in a book, um, as well as water. So maybe that's part of why this was especially atmospheric for me. Um, but ghost stories can be that way. And this one, I thought, did a really, really good job. Just overall, there were lots of lots of nights, I guess I should say, where I read a little bit before bed and then uh, walked a little, a little faster than normal between turning off the lights and getting to my bedroom, if that makes any sense. That atmosphere just really worked for me. As far as what I kind of uh, have an issue with in this book, I think there was too much going on. I think it was a little overly long for what was going on. 
I honestly think that Stephen King just had like a bunch of different ideas that were really good ideas but just didn't pan out to be their own stories and so he just like took a bunch of those and threw them together and uh, put sort of a couple different main storylines running through them. I, I For the most part that's a good thing. I don't want a book that just has like one storyline going through. You know subplots are a good thing. I just think that maybe there was too much going on in this. Like this book took me too long to read. I think it would have been a little bit more effective if it were shorter especially given the type of book and just the like the tension building. I think there was too much like tension would build and then there'd be some kind of slower scenes and I'd get a little bored and I'd read something else for a few days and then get back into a, a sort of, you know, high tension atmosphere in my head, whatever, a sort of high tension atmosphere. And, you know, it just kind of went back and forth like that. So I think there was a little too much going on. Overall, though, I think it worked as a, as a cohesive book on its own. It's not one of Stephen King's, like, all-time best books or anything, but it's definitely worth the read, at least in my opinion, if you like, if you like ghost stories at all. Um, I guess be aware that it's not just about the ghost. There's just so much more going on. But if you like creepy books, if you like Stephen King's work, um, if you like uh, books with grief as a, as a sort of undertone to them, I think this is totally a book for you. I ended up giving it four stars. There were times where I think it was more of a three star book for me, but overall I liked it. I didn't have any big complaints at all and I enjoyed every time I was reading it. I was having a good time. So, um, those are my thoughts on Bag of Bones. I would love if you'd let me know down below if you've read it, if you enjoyed it, or if you had any big complaints. Um, let me know what those are. Anyway, I will see you again soon with another video. Talk to you later.